Hey guys, it's me, Laura. I'm gonna talk about um, the 10 um, ways to stay sober during the summer. I hope everybody's doing wonderful today, blazing hot. I worked today, so we always keep the air conditioner on at work. I come home and I rip my work clothes off because they're sticking to my body. Um, and my air conditioner I keep on all day for my cats because I feel bad, You want I want them to stay cold. And um, I just shut it off. Anyway, so, um, anyway, um, I always go through my notes. I have so many notes from rehab. I look at my um, iPad, so, um, let's see here. So you want to stay vigilant about your recovery. What does that mean? Um, staying on top of your recovery, right? Um, we, we always have to remember where we came from. I always say this, you can be sober for 20 years and you can relapse. You know, that's not a negative statement. It's just a fact. I always say there's no cure for cancer. Well, that's questionable. But um, you know, you have to stay on top of it. Um, and remember, you have to do your things. So um, stay vigilant about recovery, meaning, oh my God, I got to charge. Hold on. Hi, guys, hold on a minute. I just want to do something. I hate to do that. So, um, Staying on top of your recovery is the best thing to do to maintain maintain sobriety during the summer. Um, pri prioritize recovery meetings in your schedule and keep attending no matter how busy you get. If you miss a meeting due to vacation or another event, go twice the next week. I used to do that in the beginning, right? It just made myself feel better, okay? Um, in addition, stay in contact with your sponsor and keep practicing addiction treatment therapies. Therapy, um, you learned. No, okay, so the second one is avoid old places and people. Right, um, always. Like I'm gonna be seven years sober in January. I don't go back to places I used to get fucked up in. I don't want memories of that. I mean, towards the end, I don't wanna get into me. I'm just gonna make this video about the 10, it, the 10 um, signs. My thing is like, what? something is up with my... The 10 ways to stay sober during the, the summer. Um, avoid old places and people. Um, staying on track with recovery is essential. To, so two is avoiding places or people that you associate with substance use. Um, people who participated in your active behavior. Are they gonna be in your life still? No. People that I got I got messed up with, fucked up, whatever. I don't I don't even know those people anymore. You delete those contacts of those people out of your phone immediately when you get sober, by the way. Um so people who participate in your Addictive behavior are one of the most dangerous relapse triggers that exist, right? Um, certain places that bring up memories of addiction are also triggers. Um, for example, if you are an alcoholic and you see colleagues going to happy hour, it's helpful to have a excuse ready for why you're not going. Have a healthy activity like yoga reading something else to fall back on right always 
You know, I always talk about journaling, anything to not pick up that drink. Enjoy, number three will be enjoying events, but have a game plan. I always say that, especially the first year, always have an action plan. I'm trying to like get comfortable. Um, just because you're staying sober doesn't mean you have to live like a hermit all summer. Okay, um, it's fine to go out and enjoy events, but make sure you have a game plan. For instance, you could plan, your plan could include things like take a sober friend to the event, bring in your own non-alcoholic drinks so that no one offers you one with alcohol. Like they have those now. And when I go out, when I go out, I order like cranberry juice. You can get seltzer with cranberry and like, it looks like you're drinking. I don't even give a shit what people think. I don't drink. You don't like me? Goodbye. Right? Um, giving yourself a curfew and sticking to it. Having a motivational quote on your phone. So, yep. so that every time you check in, you remember about staying sober. Um, the fourth one is hosting your own event. Guys, I gotta, I gotta sit back. You know what? I'm gonna do this. I gotta put my phone down. Oh, what a relief. What's up, Noelle? Oh, give me a minute. I really need a massage. <laughs> anybody want any anybody want a massage? I gotta like pay for a massage. So hosting your own event. That's always amazing, right? Because then you could just pick all your own stuff. Like you can um buy everything. Sobriety is awesome. When I first got sober, I was high on life. People think they can't have a good, fun life without drugs. So not true. What? Oh, you see the birdies? You hear her? Host your own event. Um, mention that your event is substance free in your invitation. This should prevent any confusion or awkward conversations during the party. Have plenty of non-alcoholic beverages available, sparkling water, soda. Keep guests busy with activities like horseshoes, cornhole, and dancing. So this could be a sober party. They have sober cruises. They do. The cruise ship is non-alcoholic. Stay busy is, is number five. I mean, self-explanatory. Complete a home improvement project, cook dinner for friends, read, write, journal, go to festivals, fairs, hobbies. Like, have a, I always say have a um, structured day. Especially the first year. I mean, you can go off schedule, but I like, like when you go to rehab, you're, it's a plan. You're up at eight, you make your bed, you go to breakfast, you go to group. Like everything's structured, you have your meetings. Honestly, when I left rehab, I was scared shit. I didn't want to leave. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do when I go home? What, honey? You want me to open the door? If you go back to your old ways when you go home, you're going to relapse. You guys, I've talked about this in my first videos when I first started my channel and I haven't, I've been talking a lot about relationships and I'm gonna open the door for you. Oh my God, I hope my whole ass wasn't out there, you guys. I don't know why you see the birdies, it's too hot, but go ahead. Go ahead, Noel.
So you have to change your life when you go home. Eventually you're gonna relapse if you go back to your same life, right? Let's not go off the subject. This is about 10 tips to having um, to stay sober during the summer. Balance your schedule. It's like the same thing. Balance your schedules, number six. Number five is stay busy. Totally fine to have a summer calendar jam-packed with activities like beach trips, barbecues, weddings, concerts, but it's important to balance these activities with one where there is no alcohol or drugs. For example, for every wedding you attend, plan a hiking trip for every barbecue, go to the gym a few times. That week, keeping a balanced schedule will help you to stay on the wagon all summer long. Gardening, bike riding, museum trips, cooking classes. Number seven is pay attention to your emotions. Mm. So emotions like stress, anger, sadness, and loneliness are all triggers for substance use. <laughs> Listen, if, you, if you're not ready, anything will tell you. I had any excuse in the book to fucking pick up a drink or cocaine. Oh, I stubbed my toe. I'm going to get a drink. You know what I mean? So your emotions are very important. Why are you feeling this way? Don't go get a drink. That's when journaling comes in and it's so important and it's so helpful. So pay attention to your emotions. Sadness, loneliness, or triggers for substance use. Depending on what's going on in your life and how busy your summer calendar is, you may experience these emotions more frequently during the summer months. That's why it's important to be self-aware and notice times when your emotions are tempting you to drink or use drugs. Number eight is practice self-care. Filling your cup, recharging your battery, whatever you call it, take care of your mental and physical health is essential for maintaining your recovery. Self-care will not different will look different, will look different for everyone else. But in general, it means taking care time throughout your day to decompress, eat well, check in with your emotions, practice hobbies and exercise. Get up, take a shower, brush your teeth, do your hair, put on a little makeup if it makes you feel better. You know, because if you don't do these things every day, that's like depression. You know, I know when I was deep in my addiction, I didn't do my doctor appointments. I always showered. I didn't get, I wasn't homeless. You know, everyone has their own story and you don't have to be homeless. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean you're not bad in your addiction, but you know, growing up as a kid, you hear drug addicts are all homeless. That's like a, like a, What's the word? You know what I mean? You could be... Addiction has no... Um, it doesn't discriminate. So rich people that live in mansions can have an addiction. You can have money. You could be a closet addict. <laughs> Lawyers that have tons of money can go home and sneak and drink a bottle. They hide it. You know what I mean? So there's no um, discrimination. And that's why it's more talked about today. So anyway, we're gonna go back to this, practicing self-care. Number nine is relax and enjoy your summer. So setting unrealistic expectations can create unnecessary stress and lead to a relapse. I've always talked about this before. Set small goals. If you try to set these crazy unrealistic goals, you're gonna relapse. Don't set the standard too high. Um, the more expectations expectations you place on yourself, the more stress you're gonna put on yourself. Add to your life and higher your chances for a relapse. That's why it's important to give yourself a break if you're planning a vacation or an event. Um, summer comes every year. If things don't go as planned, you have, a, you have next summer, right? So the last one is be kind to yourself. That is another, the 10th tip on how to stay sober for the summer. Um, whether you're one day sober or a thousand days sober, remember that recovery comes one day at a time.
That's the slogan. Sobriety is a lifelong journey. And it's important to recognize that there will be obstacles along the way. But just because there are obstacles doesn't mean you, sh you should get discouraged. Take life day by day. Work on being kind to yourself. When you face a difficult moment, try to respond with kindness and remember that you're worthy of forgiveness and happiness. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to come on and talk about how to handle a relapse because that comes with it, guys. Like, I don't know if anybody ever tried to get sober. You hear the word? I said it tried. To me, getting sober for life like I, I can't say I'll never relapse because I never is like, I just know I'm never going to relapse. But again, you can never say never. Like, like I said before, there's no cure for cancer, but like I, I, you can't hand me $10 million right now to have a drink. I would pick not having a drink much as I want $10 million. My, re my recovery is more important to me than anything. I take it very, very serious. So relapsing is part of getting sober. You're not ready, obviously. So when you relapse, why did you relapse? What was going on? See, I'm not even reading this now because I'm going to just go through them again real quick. The 10, not, but I'm going to talk about relapse tomorrow. I mean, I could make this longer. How to handle relapse now. You're relapsing because you're not working on something. You gave in too quick, right? Um, it's part of it's part of the journey, right? Um, I relapsed plenty of times before I got it. So anyway, um, Ten ways to stay sober during the summer is stay vigilant about recovery, avoid old places and people. Three is enjoy events but have a game plan. Number four is host your own event. Five would be to stay busy. Six would be balance your schedule. Seven would be pay attention to your emotions. Eight would be practice self-care. Nine would be relax, enjoy summer. And ten would be be kind to yourself. Pat yourself on the back, right? Um, I always say, one day at a time. We always said in rehab, it's simple, easy. Slow and steady, like it's just not, don't make it harder than it has to be. Um, And if you feel like um, something in that party's triggering you, leave. And I always say, if your friends are your true friends, they're gonna do what you feel. They're gonna help you through it. The friends that say, let's go out, come on, let's get fucked up. They're not your friends because they're, if they know you're trying to do the right thing and get your life together so you can have a future. <laughs> Cause let me tell you something, when you're in addiction, you don't have a future. You can't have a house, you can't have an apartment, you can't have a car, you can't have a job, you can't have a family. Cause it, addiction takes that from you. It takes it. So those friends that say, let's go out and get fucked up. They're not your friends. Keep that in mind, guys. So um, tomorrow I'll talk about relapse. Yeah, if I think about all the money I wasted on drugs, but you know what? It's the past. You, you learn. Well, I get dizzy when I take my glasses off. And uh, yeah, you always want to help others. So, um, people, places, and things, you know. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end it there. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Love you guys. Bye.